Jim Jeffries, the Falkirk manager, also makes one change. Peter Heatherston reverts to the bench to allow the highly rated young defender Gary Smith to return at fullback. And Airdrie may well still have nightmares about Sam McGivern. The former Kilmarnock striker scored a hat-trick before television cameras on his last visit to Broomfield. And he's taken his total to 16 goals for the season. The referee this afternoon, Mr George Smith from Edinburgh, who handled the Celtic against Rangers match on Sunday and will be involved in the Scottish Cup semi-final tie between Dundee United and St Johnston next week. So a perfect Easter setting for this vitally important First Division promotion clash. Falkirk starting the game and anxious to get forward straight away. Coming here, of course, with no suggestion of doing anything other than going for victory. That was made clear before the match by their manager, Jim Jeffries. And we have the memory of that 3-1 victory here at Broomfield earlier in the season to inspire them. So a free kick there yeah, given to Falkirk. No, the throw is given. There's some confusion there as the referee had a word with one of the early players. So Tommy McQueen taking this throw for Falkirk. One of several new arrivals in the regime of Jim Jeffries. One who served the club so well. A good challenge by Godfrey, another newcomer in the Falkirk ranks. His own coils first touch. Peter Godfrey leaning in above Alan Lawrence to nod that out for the throw. Yes, Harvey finding space. Challenged by Godfrey. Yes, coil. Interception made by Whitaker. Headed away by McWilliams, back marking Andy Smith. Balfour couldn't find a way past McWilliams. Here's Balfour again. This is Sammy Korn playing in midfield despite wearing number five. McPhee picking out Lawrence. This is good play from Airdrie. They're showing a lot of patience. Coyle has his kipper. McPhee supporting. Here's Coyle again. No room for the cross. Owen Coyle starting the match wide on the left side of the Airdrie midfield. Airdrie with the benefit of the breeze in the first half. Falkirk not finding it easy to get a hold of the ball in the middle of the field at this stage. There's McWilliams. There's Stainrod. McGivern on the left. Taking on Stewart. Watson's clearance. Warren supported by the former Falkirk player, Sammy Kahn. This is Smith, picking out Harvey through the gap. Balfour looking for Coyle, that's good play again from Airdrie. Uh, very determined tackling there by Smith. It's kept in play by McPhee. Smith once again. Sandy Stewart makes space for himself. Certainly not what Paul Jack intended. Offering a quick apology there to Alan Lawrence, who was the target for the pass. Very healthy attendance here at Broomfield. Five or six thousand expected from Falkirk. There's no outside as May breaks on the right, followed all the way back by Coyle. Former Hibs and Brentford player. Representing another investment by Falkirk in their future. Well, the tackling was tough enough. In the end, there's a free kick to Falkirk. Owen Coyle back there with that tough tackle on May. So, free kick to Falkirk. There's a great hit. Well, the orthodox free kick, McGivern getting up so well to rifle the header 
surprise John Martin. Oh, what a superb goal it was from McGibbon. And I make that his seventh goal before cameras this season. The free kick came from Alec Taylor, whistling across the face of the goal, and McGibbon timed it brilliantly to bullet home the header. Well, these Falkirk fans savouring the moment as McGibbon puts them ahead. And Airdrie, who had something of a brittle defence early in the season, have done much better in that aspect of the play in recent weeks. Graham Harvey with a shot. Well, fine retaliation there from Harvey. Trying to find space for this right foot shot, it was dipping all right, and Marshall was relieved to see that go over. So the Airdrie bench without, of course, Jimmy Bone, who was banished to the stand by the SFA in midweek. Stuart lending a hand there for Smith. Neil Duffy showing his versatility, operating right in the heart of midfield for Falkirk. Strong man in that area. Intended to win the ball for the more skillful players around him. Here's Sam McGibbon with an excellent chance for the second, going all the way himself. And a good save by John Martin. Well, the referee doesn't see it that way. He's given a goal kick, but there's no question in my mind that Martin made a good block. Well, there was McGibbon through on his own, setting himself for the shot. Martin going down, clearly parrying the ball for a corner. But the referee on the blind side didn't see that. Godfrey well, doing well to keep the ball in play, but only for the benefit of Evan Balfour. There's McPhee, now Harvey. Good play there by Whitaker. There's no outside this time, but Steinrod didn't quite have the pace. Well, had the clock been turned back a few years, Simon Steinrod may have made that. 32 years old, very experienced striker. Steinrod's header, there's Taylor. The handball decision goes Airdrie's way. Duffy was the culprit. Good play by Stewart. This is Con. Oh, Lawrence. Good play by Lawrence. Well, he knew exactly what he was going to do when that pass reached him. Not quite enough power in the final shot, but look at the chest control here going inside Whitaker for that left foot shot, which Marshall did well to cover. Harvey holding off Godfrey that time, looking for Sandy Stewart, but McWilliams steps in. Supported inside by Steinrod, needing all his pace to get away from Jack. Well, a clumsy late challenge by Paul Jack, and it's one which I think will earn him a yellow card. Derek McWilliams, his credit, pleading the case of Paul Jack, suggesting to the referee that a free kick is adequate, but there will be a booking. Well, it was fine play by Derek McWilliams, which forced that clumsy challenge by Jack. Alec Taylor will take this free kick, his last one, and Falkirk the lead. Well, it was intended for Steinrod. An easy one in the end for Martin. Here's Steinrod, chesting it down for Taylor. By McWilliams. No question at all of that early goal has settled Falkirk. Here's McGibbon. And McQueen. Good possession play from Falkirk. That's Alec Taylor setting it up for McGibbon. And that is brilliant play by Falkirk. The goal from Eddie May. Eddie May smiles as he congratulated Sam McGibbon for the pass. But that 
was a goal of supreme quality from Falkirk. Built up gently from midfield. That ball then flighty to Alec Taylor and let it down for Sam McGivern. He was unselfish enough to pick out May for the back healer right in front of goal. Well, Eddie May has made such an impact for Falkirk since he arrived from Brentford. That's his fourth goal for the club. And it puts Falkirk two ahead. It's well, one inside the box by Whittaker the first time. He needs help though from Duffy the second time. And here we have a corner kick. Neil Duffy took a knock in the face there as he cleared that. So that's why Brian Whittaker is signalling for attention. Former Dundee United youngster. Well, a cut eye there for Neil Duffy. He'll almost certainly have to leave the field for repairs. Well, that decision has been taken instantly. There could be no doubt about that. He'll have to be patched up if he's to continue. Ball cut continuing for the moment with ten men. Corner yeah. kick from Coyle, easily taken by Gordon Marshall. No one making any challenge. So Neil Duffy going perhaps for a stitch or two in that left eye. Breaks off Steinrod, who took a knock there, colliding with Watson. There's Jack. Harvey's header finds Conn supporting well from midfield. There's an error by Smith. Harvey must go now. And the arrival of Peter Godfrey denies Airdrie. What would have been a vital goal. And what a relief for Gary Smith. It was his error from the pass back. He didn't spot Graham Harvey. Made that an easy one, it would appear for Harvey, but Gordon Marshall did well going down at his feet, and Harvey was then crowded out in the end. The best chance for Avery so far, undoubtedly, falling to Graham Harvey. So back comes Neil Duffy. That left eye lost up to let him resume his role in midfield. There's Coyle. Tommy Conn collects. If he's supporting, he has Smith ahead of him. He's looking to send over the cross. Here's Owen Coyle. A ricochet off the head of Derek McWilliams. The result is a corner kick to Airdrie. Well, the most potent threat may well be John Watson right on the goal line for Airdrie. Coyle, Andy Smith get up well, so did Balfour, and Watson turned it over. Just trying to flick that into the top corner with the glancing header. Well, the Falcon defence clearly in trouble here. Header down was by Andy Smith, and then Watson sent it over. Scored an awful lot of goals for Dunfermline in his time there. Williams with a touch on, there's Paul Jack and referee John Smith brings a thoroughly entertaining first half to an end it started so brightly for Airdrie until Sam McGivern took a hand once again rifling home a header from an Alec Taylor free kick in 10 minutes and then Eddie May cashed in on the best attacking move of the match for Falkirk by turning in McGivern's cross to make the half-time score at Broomfield Airdrie nil, Falkirk 2 so Airdrie get off to a start in a second half, which may turn out to be as crucial a 45-minute period that they've faced all season. Trailing Falkirk before this match by three points, although they've got a game less. They really cannot afford to lose this afternoon. And that will have been impressed upon them, I'm no doubt, by Jimmy Bone during that half-time interval. For Falkirk, the priority at the start of the second half will undoubtedly be to make certain they give nothing away in the opening 10 to 15 minutes. Here's Ian McPhee, the early captain with the free kick. John Watson is going forward. Beaten to that by Godfrey, some appeals for a foul on a penalty kick, in fact, inside the area. But waved aside by referee Smith. 
So the sun could be awkward for John Martin in the Airdrie goal. Here's Alan Lawrence. It's turned back by Godfrey. He settled very quickly into that pocket defence. It's beyond the big fee, and Stain Rod. Here's a chance for Eddie May to set something up. And Andy Smith back defending, doing well, playing that against Sam McGiven for the Airdrie throw. But an awkward moment again, briefly, for the early defence. Worked on by Balfour in midfield, Coyle battling hard for possession against McWilliams. Bit of jersey pulling there by McWilliams, it's a free kick to Airdrie. Barry McWilliams concentrating on defence at this stage of the match for Falkirk. Jack. Lawrence helps it on. There's Smith going in. He's off the ball by Eddie May. Well, the referee waves play on, but there appeared to be a clear push there by May on Andy Smith. And relief there without question for the Falkirk defence. As McGiven breaks now for Falkirk at the other end. Here's McWilliams. Not quite what he intended, slicing that across. Taylor trying to retrieve it, couldn't quite make it. Well, this certainly was a controversial moment as that ball was played forward here to Alan Lawrence. His little head flick was on there, looking at Andy Smith on the run. And from this position, it appeared clear that Eddie May eased him right off the ball. Jack's header goes straight to McWilliams. Stopped there by Stewart. There's McQueen. Stainrod's dummy. Well, just too much pace on the ball. Otherwise, May would have been in the clear. McPhee inside. Here's Paul Jack. Coyle using Sandy Stewart. Adria contemplating changes. Activity on the bench. Here's Taylor, always manages to make space for himself, another good ball, trying to release Stainrod on the right. Gary Smith is behind him, Get in shot for McGibbon. Completely missed by Paul Jack, the ball bubbled over his foot just as he went to play the ball, and Sam McGibbon had a great chance, which he couldn't react to. Missed by Jack and trundled wide by McGivern. The referee has now spotted the presence of Danny Craney on the touchline. He is going to replace Andy Smith. They have to gamble now, they have to get attacking players on the field. They look for a moment as though they may put on both substitutes, but they've contented themselves with just Craney for the moment. Balfour doing well in the air, here's Harvey, back to Craney. Godfrey doing well again in the heart of the defence. And Stainrod leading into McPhee, concedes another free kick. Well, they have to hand it to Adrian, they haven't given up the fight at any stage so far. Here's Harvey, tackled inside the area by Gary Smith, and the referee Smith has given a penalty kick. This could be in the lifeline for Airdrie. Well, another moment of controversy as this ball is played forward by Sammy Khan. Here's Graham Harvey, he appears to be being held there by Gary Smith. But the tackle came in, he certainly played the ball. It must have been for the earlier holding, not for the final tackle. So here's Owen Coyle with a vital penalty kick for Airdrie. This could set us up for a tremendous finish to the match. It's Coyle against Gordon Marshall. Owen Coyle looking for his 19th goal of the season. And he's missed it. An easy save in the end for Gordon Marshall. And that may well turn out to be the last chance for Airdrie in this match. It may also...
a signal the end of the promotion hopes. A poorly struck penalty by Coyle. No problem for Gordon Marshall. Well, what a dramatic moment. It's a great break that for Falkirk. Going Coyle could hardly miss in the early part of the season. He's found life much more difficult in the goal scoring sense since his return after that serious knee injury. Here's Lawrence though breaking in the right, the chance on again for Airdrie. Looking up for support in the middle. And playing the ball into the side netting. Things not going Airdrie's way in front of goal. Come off the head of Paul Jack, there's Conn round behind him. Queen very sure-footed with that pass back. And Airdrie have altered their formation now as they throw everything into attack they have pushed John Watson to a striking role but here's Stainrod breaking for Falkirk this could tie it up perfectly finished by Stainrod that surely ties up the points for Falkirk well what deadly finishing this was by the Falkirk captain the long clearance catching out the end of defence, he took that on the drop, drilled the ball beyond John Martin to put Falkirk three in front. Well, what a great piece of finishing by Simon Stainrod. This is his 15th goal of the season, one long ball catching out the end of defence. He looked up, steady himself with a right foot shot, and Martin was left helpless. Long ball from McPhee. Headed on there by Watson for Harvey. He's bundled down there in that challenge from the rear by Whittaker, but the referee's done nothing wrong with that. So another fleeting chance goes a begging for Airdrie. Now there's going to be an alteration made by Falkirk. Making a substitution. The player going off to tremendous applause is the scorer of the opening goal, Sam McGiven. Here the applause for McGiven from the Falkirk supporters. And the player coming on is Peter Heddleston. Back with Paul Jack Airdrie ending the game as they started it on the attack. But in the middle of the match, they lost three goals. And that's why they'll end this match. Nothing to show for their efforts. Well, Falkirk will march on at the top with Heddleston. Stainrod playing it through the gap for McWilliams, this could be the fourth. The early defence wide open, there's McWilliams. And a superb save from John Martin. Well, a fourth for Falkirk really would have put a complexion on the affair, which would not be justified. So the ball played into this space. The early defence had all pushed up, supporting an attack. There was Derek McWilliams, but it was a great block by Martin. What a kick taken short. Heatherston and Duffy together. It's Duffy again. The offside flag is up. Almost inevitable that would be a free kick. So Falkert not only snatching two points, but also enhancing their goal difference. As the final whistle goes, the happiest of afternoons for Falkert. They've turned out to be convincing winners in the end despite great efforts made by Andrew. these Falkirk supporters traveling the country now consistently to support Falkirk's charge toward the Premier Division Simon Stainrod the skipper led the line well scored the crucial third which tied up the game but Andrew will be looking back on that missed penalty kick from Owen Coyle just one minute before Simon Stainrod tied the match up for Falkirk so the applause bringing around Broomfield from these Falkirk supporters who march on towards promotion. The final score at Broomfield, every nil, Falkirk three. Jim, another convincing victory here at Broomfield, obviously happy hunting ground. Did that game go according to plan? Yes, uh, we felt that Airdrie would uh, obviously cup tie it early doors and, and play the long ball and try and catch us out of the back. We, we actually felt that uh, that was one of their weak spots and for the first you know, 25 minutes we continued to knock the ball into space and get behind them and we caused them havoc and uh, we did the damage but 
overall I felt Falkirk were the, were the better side uh, right throughout the 90 minutes. People have been saying in some places that you're better going forward than you are at the back, but your defence seemed to play a key role this afternoon. How do you react to any criticism of your defence? Well, I can understand it really. I think they should look after their own defences uh, because Falkirk have lost the least goal goals this season and uh, so that proves that the defence is doing their job. Yes, we like to go forward and like to attack and we've scored the goals uh, to prove that, but we've also, we can do our job there and uh, really, you know, the people that are saying that, uh, I don't know, I can't understand it because the proof's in the pudding and we, you know, all you need is check the facts and we, you know, we've had another clean sheet here today. Uh, scored another three goals and uh, you know, just let them keep knocking us and we'll just keep bouncing back. Well, despite the fact that it was played in cup tie spirit, your second goal I think must have given you particular pleasure, did it? Well, we scored three cracking goals here on our last visit, uh, Sammy McGivern, which uh, we know all about. And I think the second goal equaled that actually. It was a, a great passing movement and then we got behind him and Sammy looked as if he was going to shoot and we got a great ball across the face of goals. And, Eddie's cheek as you like uh, popped up in the right spot as he's done since we bought him. He's you know he's proven to be a tremendous asset and uh, he's always in the uh, in, in there capable of scoring a goal and uh, it was a great move and it just set us up nicely. And then, obviously Gordon Marshall's penalty save is uh, you know could have let them back in the game, but I felt that was a hard uh, decision uh, or a harsh decision and and he got his just rewards. But then Simon scored a tremendous goal and, and uh, took the pressure off us again and we could have won him before five at the end of the, end of the day, but we're happy and, and we're right on track for the Premier League. What's the secret of the Falkirk success, do you think? Uh, teamwork. We all work hard in training. We're all behind the manager and uh, a preparedness to, to get down to the, to the real graft and, and stick in together. And that's seen us through so far. Did you approach this game as one of the major hurdles before the end of the season? We approached it exactly the same as we've approached all the games, and uh, that's with a you know a good professional attitude, and it, it's seen us through so far. And there's no need need to change it just for one game. I noticed in the game, despite the importance of the occasion, you were still willing to offer one or two little tricks and circus acts, which seemed to upset the management team. Is that a part of your play? Well, I've heard these circus acts, but I, I define them as high skilled football <laughs> class sort of skills but uh, you know you define them however you will from the point of view of skippering the Falkirk side do you think it's something which helps the rest of your teammates in tight positions uh, I think so yeah uh, I mean generally the skippers come in, in the back four position or the centre of midfield but uh, uh, having played in, in a couple of countries England and France and, and played at the highest level I think it's been a good move for the manager to, to, to make me captain and it's uh, I think it's, it's rubbed off on the other players and, and we've all done well through, the, through this period of the season. There's a fair mixture of uh, experience and youth on the side. How good do you think this Falkirk side is, comparing them with teams you've played in at the top level before? Uh, well, there's a way to go, yeah. I mean, we, we, we're a good side, but we're, we're really just building. You know, we, we've got to build, and, and if, uh, if luck uh, carries through and we, and we do go up, then we shall have to obviously add to the squad because we need a much bigger squad to compete in the Premier League, and uh, I'm sure that'll be a priority. Will you be there for the Premier League? Uh, hopefully, yes. Yes. Great. Well done. Thanks. Thank you.